Welcome to this edition of the Dean's Video Newsletter. Today we're going to have a, a discussion with regards to what we've done on the financing side for our clinical departments. What you need to understand is that we originally had a system of funding uh, for our clinical departments that dates back really for 20 or 30 years, where the funding that was made available was funding that was delivered on block. We didn't necessarily have an understanding as to how that funding was to be utilized. And so from an accounting point of view, it was very difficult to hold ourselves responsible for how were the dollars actually utilized. So what have we done? We had an agreement uh, working with our partners on the hospital side, and this goes back almost three and a half years ago, uh, that we would put all of the funds on the table. So there would be transparency to this. So dollars that, as a chair previously, I would never have seen other than, yeah, they showed up on my books, I didn't know where they came from. Now everybody declared where they came from. We then went through and looked at every single pot of funds and said, what were they intended to be uh, delivering? So if they were meant to be undergraduate education funding, then that's what they were to be used for. If they were international medical graduate, that's what they were to be used for. If we had dollars that were set aside and segregated specifically for research, then that's what they were to be used for. At the end of the day, this created a series of categories of, of funds, undergraduate, postgraduate, infrastructure support, secretarial support, research, and so on, right across the board. And we looked at the overarching budget that existed, again, amalgamating it all together, and then said, how do we then create metrics for each one of those pots? So if you're thinking in your mind along a spreadsheet right now, you're starting to think about columns, right? Columns of funding. And each one of those columns has a defined group of deliverables. So for instance, if it's the research, right? The metrics that we look for are publications, peer-reviewed grants. Where are you in international committees? How are you sharing between different groups? So if I have a grant and somebody in a different faculty has a grant, how do we account for all of those? So how do we metric that and how do we measure that? If it's at the postgraduate level, perhaps a little easier. How many postgraduate students do you have? Right? Are they national or international in their origin? So you can go into each one of those columns, identify the deliverables, and then we roll up all of those deliverables for each column. And, and a simple way of, of thinking about that is, if I have $100 that I can utilize to pay for all of my postgraduate education, and I have 100 postgraduate students, each one of those students is worth a dollar. If I have 10 students, each worth $10. And so if my department happens to have five of those students, and another has five of those students, then we take those $10 each and we each get $50. All the other departments who don't have postgraduate students get zero. Right? So it really works along that basis. It sounds fairly simple, but in fact it's taken three and a half years to put all of those metrics together. Now imagine, if you will, you're thinking about those columns. Right? So you now have in your mind that we have undergraduate, we have postgraduate, and we have all those other pieces sitting in there. Now create the rows. And the rows that cross-cut each one of those is the individual department. So you might take a department like ophthalmology, for instance. And you could look across every one of those intersections between ophthalmology and each column and say, all right, in the undergraduate, we deliver X. The value of X is this. Good. Postgraduate, here's the value of that. Here's our research. Here's the value of that. And then at the end of the day, you take that entire row and you add it all up, and now you have your annual budget. Right? That is an absolutely fundamental shift in how we do financing at this school. It's actually incredibly unique, and we'll be writing it up for publication purposes, because there's no other school in Canada, and we think no other school in North America, that actually looks at their funding in that rigorous a manner that allows you to understand exactly what's going on. Now, that would be only half of the challenge, right? So that's actually getting you to the point where you understand the dollars. What do you do with that? Well, you publish it. So it's, it's no longer a, I wonder what you're getting. Maybe I'm getting more, maybe I'm getting less. Completely transparent, completely equitable. And you have opportunities then to look at that and say, well, where can we have our growth? So as a departmental chair, then I could now sit down and say, all right, I would like to actually increase the amount of funding that comes to my department. How can I do that? I can look in each one of those columns and, and realistically, where could I actually do something? And most often it's going to be on the research side of the equation. Can I drive the research mantra of the particular department further along the lines of the Schulich School of Medicine and Dentistry strategic plan and, and come out ahead on all of that? The answer is yes, you could. So start to plan, start to look at that over the course of time. The other piece in all of that is that it wouldn't be fair for, for us if what I did was 
change it every year. So it's going to be a three-year rolling average. So it's not going to be sudden dramatic changes from year to year. You can plan around this. You know what your funding is going to look like. For it. So it's transparent. It has a huge level of accountability. Right? It allows you to understand what the entire school is doing. And then when on an annual basis I have a conversation with a departmental chair about how their department is performing, where can we help, we now have a framework in which to do that. What we're going to talk about next time when we get together is equally as ambitious uh, and perhaps more challenging, and that is how do we deliver distributed medical education as a school? This was established over the course of the last decade to decade and a half. It's a tremendous program. It's time to ask what is it going to look like for the next decade and decade and a half as teaching has changed. So we'll be talking about that uh, when I get together again with you again in the near future for that. In the meantime, thank you very much for joining me uh, on this. Uh, I look forward to seeing you again.